If you have fond memories of tie-dye shirts and the Grateful Dead, or maybe your parents do, well, you're probably going to be pretty happy today. And hey, even if you don't have those fond memories, you still can't deny that this all-electric van just looks cool. Welcome to Car and Driver. I'm Carlos Lago, and today we're talking about the new Volkswagen ID Buzz. Now, whether you remember the original Volkswagen bus as the Type 2, the Vanagon, the Microbus, or whatever you called it, I'm sure you can see its spirit in this new ID Buzz. We've seen concepts of this van for some time now, and now we have the details of what you can expect when it goes on sale. Before we go further though, keep in mind that the buzz around the buzz, sorry, uh, today includes both the European version and the one we're gonna get in the US in 2024 or two years from now. There are some big differences between the two. For starters, the European one comes in a shorter length and can be configured as a cargo van, while the US version is longer and has three rows of seats that can fit seven people in total. We'll cover more as we dive deeper. What's the power? Well, the Buzz is built on similar underpinnings as the Volkswagen ID4, and like the ID4, the Buzz has a 77 kilowatt hour battery, and initially it will come with a single electric motor with roughly 200 horsepower and 230 pound-feet of torque. The entry-level Buzz is rear-wheel drive, just like the original. Also, like the ID4, a dual-motor all-wheel drive version will be available, and we expect that one at a minimum to equal the 295 horsepower you get with the all-wheel drive ID4. How about range? Well, we don't know yet, but based on the ID4's current figures, around 280 miles, it's safe to estimate that the larger and presumably heavier buzz will fall closer to the 200-mile mark. This thing just looks cool, right? I think so. And its flat sides, big wheels, and two-tone paint make it look pretty compact in the photos and video. But let's talk size. Where the European Buzz comes in either a five-seat or a cargo van configuration, the Buzz for the US is a bit longer and has three rows of seats for seven passengers total. Two in the front, three in the middle, and two in the back. Now, it's roughly the same width as other vans on the market, like the Honda Odyssey or Toyota Sienna, but at a hair over 76 inches, the Buzz is quite tall, just like the van again was in the 80s. We're talking the height of a modern F-150 here, and we hope that means there's gonna be plenty of headroom. What about charging? Well, let's back up and talk about the state of public charging stations in the US. Currently, if you don't have a Tesla supercharger, or if you're not on the Tesla supercharger network, it's a bit like watching video on demand these days with a bunch of different providers, and each one has their own app and username and password, and sometimes you show up ready to charge and the charger won't communicate with your phone and so on. It can be a pretty frustrating experience. Which is why we're happy Volkswagen is including a so-called plug and charge feature that aims to allow cars to communicate directly with chargers, eliminating the need for cards or apps on your phone. Now this tech will actually arrive in the middle of this year as part of a big over the air software update for the ID4. So we should have a far better picture of how it all works well before the ID Buzz goes on sale. And that brings us to the topic of tech interfaces. Now, the Buzz uses a similar interior layout and interface for controlling the car as the ID4, and we criticize the ID4 pretty strongly for being largely unintuitive in that regard. Uh, but Volkswagen tells us that the over the air update I mentioned previously also includes significant updates for the entertainment interface. When it arrives for the ID4, that should give us a pretty good idea of what to expect when the Buzz goes on sale as well. 
Other than that, the interior looks fun and usable with bright colors and the humorous play and pause logos on the accelerator and brake pedals. We just hope the Buzz will offer a bit more in the way of regenerative braking so that you get that one pedal driving experience that we really enjoy with EVs. Speaking of driving it, we obviously haven't been in the US version yet, but our correspondent Mike Duff drove a pre-production European model in the cargo van specification and came away generally impressed. You can read his story on cardriver.com, but the gist of it is that the ID Buzz was relatively quiet on the road, which is impressive for a cargo van, and he also reported that the ride was comfortable too. Now, that pre-production van had 18 inch wheels and we expect the US Buzz to have wheels as large as 21 inches like the one you're seeing in this video. Now, as far as acceleration is concerned, because the Buzz has the same amount of power as the ID4, but is likely heavier, you can expect it to be slower as well. Expect zero to 60 acceleration from the standard model in perhaps the nine second range. That may seem slow in today's world, but that would also be nearly twice as quick as that Vanagon I mentioned earlier that we tested in 1980. And hey, these vans are all about peace, love, and happiness, and not G-forces, right? On that note, we also expect the Buzz should be able to handle modern freeway speeds and inclines on freeways as well, more aggressively than, or more strongly than the Vanagon could. Well, that's everything we currently know about the new ID Buzz. What do you think? Cool? Otherwise, let us know in the comments below. And hey, if you liked this video, we'd appreciate if you told us that by clicking the like button and subscribing. Thanks for watching.